Excel Chapter 9 Practice Review Assignment. Okay, number one, copy 9 2 from your student data files folder, means your working folder, and then rename it as plan. Okay, number two, okay, write your name, enter your name, get okay, enable content. Enter your name and the date. Okay, for okay, in the loan scenario section. Okay, in B4, cell B4, enter 5.75. That is in a percentage already. Okay, and then annual interest rate okay, for this much, the business loan. Okay, number four, I7. So this is I7. The PMT function, okay, there are various functions. So in each blank, we will, feel, we will use a different functions so so for this cell i7 okay, this cell is looking for the pmt uh you know, the payment per you know, per quarterly payment so we will use the payment function pmt function and this function requires three arguments the rate is the quarterly rate so it will be h7 the quarterly rate and the number of period is you know so there will be 10 years and uh 10 years multiplied by 4 because there are 4 quarters in a year so the number of periods will be 40 10 times 4 is 40 and the present value is the amount that you uh, borrowed which is $750,000 okay and then all right and then as you see this okay, the first argument is a rate so we can find you know rate Using a rate function, we can find n per, also we can find PV function. So let's try C8. Okay, C8 used the future value function, so that is equal to FV, future value is equal to the rate. Rate is a quarterly rate, so use H8, comma, the number of period is same as 40, so F8, comma, the payment. The payment is seven. Uh, sorry, the payment is this one. So I eight, comma, and the present value. The present value is this seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So there will be the future value, like this. Okay, and the next one is F nine. Okay, F nine is the a number of periods. So based on this, based on this information, we will find out the number of uh, periods. So that is equal to NPER, use the NPR function. So this one requires the rate. So in this case, quarterly rate. So H9. And the payment is every 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 quarter, the payment is 22,000. So click I9. And the present value is $750,000. Okay, then so these are all the given values and then from this one we will find the number of periods so it should be similarly to uh, 40 so we got a 47.719 so for d9 we can do this way d9 is number of years so number of years is divide the number of quarters by number of years four i mean the the, the number of quarters per year so this will be so total number of quarters, which is F9 divided by uh, four quarters in a year. So divided by E9. So it's similarly, it's, it's around 11.8 years. Okay, now B10. Okay, B10, we will use present value function. So equals PV, 
parenthesis. This one requires the first argument is rate. So the quarterly rate is H10. The number of period is F10. And the payment, the quarterly payment is I10. Okay, and then M10. So, so the present value will be this one. Okay, number five. Okay, startup plan worksheets. So click the startup plan worksheets and then number 25. I, B20, uh, B25. Okay, and enter 660,000. Okay, and number six in G5. Okay, amortize, amortization schedule. So go to the amortization schedule. And sell G5. Okay, G5 is this one. So G5 will be calculate the uh, payment period per quarter using the PMT function. So the loan amount is $6,600 and then uh, the it will be calculated, you will pay quarterly. So for four years, then I'm sorry, for the 10 years, 10 years term, then there are four quarters per year. So there are total of 40 payments. So enter number of period is 40. So for the payment function, use the PMT function. And the rate is, so the annual rate is 5.75, but the quarterly rate will be divide this annual rate by four, which is 1.44. So we will use rate as the value in the D5. Number of period is, there are 40 of them, so F4, F5. And the present value is the loan amount, which is A5. Okay. So quarterly, you need to pay this much amount. Now the parenthesis means negative sign, negative, negative, negative number. Negative number means you are, your money is going off, you know, out of your pocket. So the money is going out, so the result is negative. Okay, if you want to make it positive, then what you have to do is in the present value, just put the negative sign. Then the result will be positive. Positive. But in this case, you don't need to put negative sign. Just put A5. So anyway, the payment is negative number, which is the money you loan, you borrow money. So you are paying the money. The money, this, this amount is going out of your pocket. This is my money. Okay, number seven, D9. Okay, D9 is interest, interest payment. So, you know, quarterly you pay this much amount. Then from this amount, some part of this amount will be the interest and the other will be the principal. So every payment, each payment is divided into interest payment and the principal payment. So we can use IPMT function, interest PMT function, so that this will calculate the interest amount. So use IPMP, interest payment function. The rate is same as D5. And then we will use the auto fill later on. So this D5 should, the address of D5 should not change. So we will press F4 to make it, you know, dollar sign. And number of period is 40. Uh, in this case, actually it's not 40 because the number of period is this numbers. This number, B, B9. Okay, so whenever we copy this cell, this number of periods will be it will be, you know, B9, B10, B11, B12, and so on. So B9 stays the same. Don't, uh, no, we, we don't need a dollar sign on the cell B9. The number of period is 40. So click F4, press F4 so that we can put the dollar sign here. And the prison value is A5, dollar sign. Okay, and enter. So actually, you know, when you pay the first payment, 
first quarterly payment, you are paying 21,800 something. And then from this amount, 9,488 is the interest. Okay, so when we autofill this, click D9 and then right click on the lower right corner. Okay, right click of your mouse. And then hold, hold it down and then drag it all the way up to D48 and release your mouse. All right, then we want to fill this without formatting. So select without formatting. Okay, and then let's fill out this uh, this cell. Okay, this is principal payment, so it equals to, that is equal to. Uh, okay, use the PPMT. Parenthesis number of. Uh, the rate per period is B five. Is it B five? D five, and then press F four to put dollar sign. Number of periods is is B9, you know, the, the period is B9, comma, the B9 does not have a dollar sign, okay, number of period is this one, F5, and then press F4 to put dollar sign, the present value is A5, then press F4 to put print, uh, dollar sign, and then enter. So, this payment, the first payment is composed of these two, the interest payment and the principal payment. The sum of these two should be 21,811. Okay, and then we will do the same thing, use the auto fill, so right, right click on your mouse, and then hold it down, drag it all the way to E48, and then fill without formatting. Okay, so the final balance should be zero. So C49 should have zero value. So each quarter you pay the same amount. And each amount is separated into two pieces. One is interest. The other one is the amount for the principal. Okay, number eight is using a cumulative principal function. So this will accumulate all the payments you paid for certain period. So from here, in this case, select B55. So this will calculate uh, the amount of payments you paid from first quarter to fourth quarter. Okay, so use C-U-M-P-R-I-N-C function, cumulative principal function. So this one requires the rate. So the rate is, rate is D5, right? So D5, press F4, comma, put the dollar sign here. And the number, and the end per is 40. So click F5, and then press F4, comma. The present value is the loan amount. So click A5. Press F4, comma. So we have a dollar sign for this because we wanna we will copy this cell for others, but we don't wanna change this value. So fix the cell address using the dollar sign. Okay. The next argument is the start period. So start period is quarter one. So click B53. We don't need dollar sign because whenever we copy the cell, this cell will change. And then end the period is four, the fourth quarter. And then type is okay, the paying period is end up. So always the end of period is the payment time. So put zero. Okay, so that's the formula for this cell. And enter. So for the four first four payment, this is the amount cumulative amount for the principal. Okay, how about the uh, interest? So we use the similarly interest, the cumulative CUM interest IPMT function. 
the radius same as this one d4 press f4 comma the second argument is n per n per is f5 press f4 comma prism value is the loan amount so a5 f4 comma start period start period is first quarter and the end period is the fourth quarter so b54 parentheses in this case we don't have a we don't need to put this print uh, the dollar sign for these two cells because when we copy this this will automatically to the next cell okay, enter okay the last argument which is the type type is the end of period okay now okay so for the four first four quarters this is the amount interest amount this is the principal amount and the sum is the total amount okay and then what we can do is drag it or use autofill so drag the lower right corner all the way to the right okay that's it that was that was for number eight Okay, for number nine, okay, we will go to the profit and loss worksheet. So let me scroll this one to the right a little bit. Okay, so profit and loss. This is profit and the loss, right? Okay, so from here, okay, in the range C8 to E8. C8 to E8. So we're going to fill this one as uh, the revenue values. So the year one is one million, year five is three million. And we will fill in this uh, fill in this blank with the amount based on a linear a linear amount. So that means so by adding some number to the first year, there will be the second year, and the add the same amount to the second year, so it becomes third year, and then do the same thing. So we will add same amount to each previous year to get the your revenue so all the way up to three million so we can do this one using your know, fill using a fill uh feature so select b8 to 8 f8 okay select these five cells and then in the home tab click the home tab click the home tab in the edit editing group click this fill arrow fill arrow and then we will up use series okay fill series so we're gonna fill some numbers in this blank fill in this blank with some numbers so we will fill by the rows okay in this row we will fill some value in this row and it will be the type will be linear so same number will be added to the previous number and then we will use trend and then click ok so automatically it fills so five five hundred thousand is added to the first year and another five thousand is added to the second year and it became two million another five hundred thousand another five hundred thousand okay this is how we can fill in some values like this okay that's number nine okay number ten in the range C14 to F14, so these values will be uh, multiplied by the 12%. There is a 12% increase from the previous year. So in this case, we can fill these blanks using 12% increase. So select B14 to F14, and we will apply the fill series. Okay, this time we are doing a percentage increase. So this is not a linear, so we will use growth. You select the growth, rows, growth, and the step value is one point, this 12%. 12% means 1.12, right? The previous number plus 12% increase. 
So it will be 1.12. So click 1.12 and then OK. So each value is the 12% uh, increase from the previous value. So this one is 12% increase from year to value and so on. OK, now C5 to C15. So same thing. So select B15 to F15. This should be 15, right? This should be 15. Okay, we will apply 5% here. Increase. So use the fill series growth. And the step value is 5%. So it will be 1.05. And one, one means you know the previous number plus zero five means five percent increase. Can that click OK? So each number is five percent increase from the previous number. And also so probably this one should be the insurance should be also five percent increase as well. Okay, so why don't we just select these two uh, two rows so that we can apply five percent to each? So we could do this one, you know, when we do when we do this. So that's okay. We can do it now. So select these two rows and then auto fill. Or you use the fill series growth and then the step value is one point zero five. Or you can you can enter one hundred and five percent. One hundred and five percent. So this will still work the same. Okay. Alright, that was number ten and number eleven. So in the startup plan. So go to the uh, startup plan and then change and then enter the value in the cell B12. 3,105 or 50,000. Okay, so we just change the B12. Okay, and then go to the depreciation, depreciation worksheet, depreciation worksheet here. Okay, long term cost is this. Salvage value is, the salvage value is the, you know, final value. So let's say you have a machine. Okay, you, you have a machine which is $350,000. And then after 15 years, you know, 15 years later, the value will be you know fifty thousand dollars. So that's the service value. Okay, so number twelve. Okay, in range B10 to F10, B10 to F10, we will calculate the straight line depreciation. Straight line depreciation is the function is SLN, SLN. So click, uh, click B, click B10. So in B10, we will, uh, we will use the function named SLN. Straight, straight line function. So this one requires the cost, which is. B4, so B4 dollar sign, comma, and the service value is $50, so click B5, and the, you know, we want to, we want to make a dollar sign because we don't want to, when, when we copy the cell, we don't want, we want these cells fixed. Okay, the third argument is life, because life is 15 years, so click 15. So, which is B6, right? B6, but yeah, B6, and then F4, close parenthesis. Okay, so that is uh, yearly depreciation is this much. Okay, and then let's use autofill. So it looks like this. Uh, let me double check on this one. 
Okay, I made a mistake on B10, the formula, because the B10 formula is, this is B4, right? B4, not B44. It's got to be B4. So the cost is B4, and then salvage is B5, and the life is 15 years, which is B6. And then make sure to put the dollar sign. Okay, and then autofill, autofill to the right. So we should have this number. Okay, number 13. Number 13 is we're going to use a declining balance function. Decline balance function for this one, yearly depreciation. So that is equal to DB function, DB parenthesis. Cost is B5, F4. The salvage is B6, F4. Wait a minute. Okay, the cost is B4. Okay, B4 and then F4. Salvage is B5, F4. The life is B6, F4. And the period, the period is the year, in this case year, so click B15. Okay, B15 does not require the dollar sign because we want to copy this cell to the right. So when you copy this cell to the right, 15 should be increased by, I mean, I'm sorry, C, or B should be increased to C15, D15, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. So copy this, so click lower right corner and then drag it to the right. So this will be C15, right? D15, and so on, E15. Okay, in the profit and loss worksheet, so click the profit and loss worksheet, B22 and F22. So B22, starting from B22, so click B22, equal sign, and this depreciation value will be the value in the depreciation worksheet. So click depreciation worksheet, and then click B16. Okay, B16 is this one. And then enter. So this, this value is the value from the depreciation worksheet and then scroll it to the right. So we are copying, we are copying this cell. So you will copy, so B16 will be C16 in the depreciation worksheet. And this will be same depreciation worksheet, the address B16. So B, C, D, E, F16, right? Okay, that was number 14, and then number 15. Okay, in the range B25 to F25. So B25 is the, B25 is this one. So that is equal to, so the, this is the value of B56 in the amortization schedule worksheet. So equals, enter equal sign, Click Amortization Worksheet, and then click B56. B56 is this, and enter. Okay, and then Autofill, so click the Autofill, lower right corner, and then drag it to the right. Okay, so that was number. 15. But for the number 15, uh, see number, never is, number 15, or did I miss something? Amortizing value. Okay. So now number 16. Okay. For this, uh, the formula for this B25. Okay, actually, we need to change it. Okay, we want to express it as a positive value by changing the sign of the interest value. We want to make it positive value. So, okay, as you see this, this, the parenthesis is negative value. So we want to make it positive. What we can do is put the negative sign right before the uh, amortization. So minus sign uh, after the equal sign. 
So this value will be multiplied by negative and the end pair. So this, this number became positive number. So now use auto fill to fill the other one, the other values. Okay, so that was number uh, B25 to F25. Okay, number 16, B28. Okay, B28. B28 is a so B28, we will use if function. So equals, put the equal sign and then if. Okay, if. Well, the first argument is the logical test. The logical test is this. Okay, the row 26 is negative. If row 26 is negative. So, uh, which is B26, right? So if B26 is less than zero, because negative means less than zero, comma, then this will display zero text, zero, comma, otherwise. So that means positive. If this value is positive, then this will uh, display the value that is multiplied by, okay, display the value, which is, Okay, multiply cell F5 by pretax profit. So click this B6. So this is pretax profit. So multiply this one by F5. So what is F5? F5 is this 33%. Okay, and then press F4. Because we want to put the dollar sign for this uh, this uh, tax rate because we wanna we don't want we don't want we don't want to change this thirty three uh, this cell which contains thirty three percent when we copy the cell so when we copy the cell B twenty six should be increased to C twenty six D E F and so on so we don't have a dollar sign on B twenty six. Okay, and then close parenthesis. So since this is negative number, the result is zero, and this is a positive number, these numbers will be multiplied by 33%. And then use autofill. Okay, so that's for number 16. Okay, in the startup plan worksheet, startup plan worksheet, okay, enter 25. $250,000 in B30. So I click B30. So the investors, the amount in the investors is $250,000. Okay, and number 18. Okay, calculate the rate okay, in the investment worksheet. Investment worksheet is this one. Investment worksheet B9. Okay, we want to find the rate based on this information. So we can use the rate function, rate. This one requires the number of payment, which is B8, comma, the payment, the monthly payment, which is, uh, in this case, it is yearly payment, right? So click B7, comma, present value is the loan amount. So B6. Close parenthesis. So the rate will be 3.26%. Annual, this is annual rate. Okay. And then, number 19. Okay, sell. In cell B9 investment, I'm oh, sorry, number 19, B13, in cell B13, okay, the value for B13 is 0, and then C13 and D13 is 6,000, and year 4 and 5 is 25,000. Okay, and number 20. Okay, number 20 is the sum, the net cash flow is the sum, so 
this will be this value and some of these two will be displayed in this cell some of these three will be some of these three values will be in this cell and so on some of all of these will be in this cell so why don't we just use the sum function sum starting from this one and then we will copy the cell so make it dollar sign column Mm. Okay, something was wrong. So let's click the B18 again, B18 and then F4. So B18 has a dollar sign, column, and B18. So when we copy this cell down, copy the, the formula down, then B18 stays the same, remains the same, but B18 will be B19, B20, B20, and B21, and so on. So let's use autofill. So this will be the sum of these two, right? B19, up to B19. And this will be the sum of up to B23. B23. Okay. And number 21. Okay, so cell C25, cell C25, uh, desired rate of return is 12%. The type 12%. And then C26 is, okay, we're gonna use net present value function, NPV. NPV requires the rate, which is 12%. So C25, I'm sorry, oh, C25, comma, the value one, okay, the value for this NPV is range B19 to B23. So use the B19, so click, click B19 to B23, and then cross parenthesis and type. Okay, now net present value, okay, C27 is equal to It's equal to you know adding B18 and C16. So B18 plus B16. Uh, B26, isn't it? C26. So B18 plus C26. Enter. And C28. It's use the uh, internal rate of return function so equals IRR requires values and these values are from B18 to B20 so B18 to B23 sorry B23 and then enter all right so you know we are using various functions so when you use a function you know there are arguments so make sure you specify the argument correctly. Okay, in the profit and loss worksheet, okay, B31 to F31. B31, so B31 should be a reference to B13 in the investment worksheet. So press equal sign. And then click investment worksheet and the value will be B13. B13 and then enter. And use autofill to the right. Okay. The so number 23. An error is somewhere in the worksheet. So starting with F18 in the balance sheet. So click the balance sheet. Look at this. We have, uh, there is, okay, this, a okay, ref means there's an error, error occurs. So this one, okay, double click this. Then this is looking for the cash worksheet. The cell address is B23. So go to the cash. So click the cash. And then B23. B23 is here. So double click B23 and this is referring to these two cells, right? These two cells. 
So this blue is okay, but not this one. Then press F, press escape key, and then double click B22. This one is referring to this cell, the red one and the blue one. The blue one is an error. So press press escape to get rid of get out get out from the from the formula. And then click double click B12. Okay, now B12 is referring these numbers, right? These numbers. But look at this. B7 has an error. So press escape, click B7, double click B7. Okay, B7 is referring to the value in B23 in the worksheet profit and loss. Ah, there is a problem here. The name of the worksheet is profit and the word A and D, but A and D is not here. So let's replace this with and. So since we corrected this data, you know, this cell, everything's perfect, right? Okay. Or you can do this way. Okay, we got a, so we have a, you know, an error here. So in the balance, we have an error. So in this case, we can do this way. Click the, uh, click the formulas tab. Here is error checking. Error checking and then trace error. Trace error. Then this gives us, uh, you know, some kind of arrow. So double click this arrow. And then select this and then click OK. Then you know it gives us another page, right? So do it again. So click this, trace error. So we have an error somewhere. So why don't we double click this? Oh well, you don't have to double click this because we have an error somewhere over here. So if you double click this, then you can find something's wrong with this. So you can put N, so there's no error. So we don't need this arrow, so click this remove arrows, and then even in the balance, remove arrows. So you can trace, you know, trace one by one, or you can click this, so that you can find where it's traced to. Alright, so that's it for this exercise.